Hey everybody, Zach here with Gallant Few. How's everyone doing? Hopefully we get some people trickling in here. Looks like we've been live for just a few seconds. All right, well, hey, today everybody, I'm very happy for those who are watching this either live now, or if you are watching it on uh, social media, or maybe this is already recorded and you're watching it now. Hopefully you have uh, a great experience watching this. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Zach Sabalos. Uh, I, serve, <clears throat> excuse me, I serve in the Marine Corps. And when my time there uh, was over, I had my transition out. And one day I stumbled upon Gallant Few. Uh, and I guess it was kind of that's all she wrote. And I was very, very fortunate, very blessed. I know Carl Monger, the executive director and founder of Gallant Few, uh, he once said that there's no such thing as luck. So I try to steer away from that. And I try to say that I've been very fortunate, been very blessed. Uh, and I haven't. I, I've been very, very very fortunate blessed to have the life that I have right now. So what I'm going to talk about again, this uh, list leader chat is it's just going to be me. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about my own personal experience. I don't want to fixate too much on that because Gallon Pew has uh, uh, conveyed my story several times and uh, I'm very, again, very grateful for that, but I want to focus on veterans out there uh, or anybody related to veterans. Uh, I want to focus on those who might need a little bit of uh, I don't know, like a little pick me up, a little pat on the back or something, just some type of inspiration to uh, to pick up and keep going, to not drop that pack. And feel free, please, to uh, to uh, send some comments in. Katie Hoover, hi. And she's a, she always says ancient ranger wife in Savannah, Georgia. It's always great to have uh, have her watching us, and uh, it's always great to have that support. So thank you very much, Ms. Katie. And again, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to start into my story. And please, if you have any questions, any comments, do not hesitate. Um, and I'll do my best to uh, to reply uh, <laughs> as much as I can. Um, but all right, well, uh, if you're ready, then let's go ahead and dive into this. And we won't talk too long for today since it's just me. I can ramble for days and days, um, but I'm not going to today. I'm gonna try and contain myself. So my name again, my name is Zach Sabalos. I served in the Marine Corps from 2008 to 2012. And during that time there, I served with 1st Battalion, 5th Marines Alpha Company. I was a rifleman. Um, I, we, we, uh, trained for about two years for our last workup to go to Afghanistan in uh, March of 2011, I believe, uh, we deployed to Sangin, Afghanistan. Sangin is in the Helmand province and it's for lack of better words, it's not the nicest place in the world. <laughs> it is, uh, and it's not the, the best temperature place or the best weather in the world either. It's, uh, usually really, really, really hot or pretty cold for the most part. And, um, during my time there, uh, our, our unit, 1st Battalion, 5th Marines, we encountered about 191 casualties and we ended up losing 17 uh, Marines uh, killed in action, anything by uh, gunshot wounds to uh, IEDs and whatnot. And so during that time there, we were always taught, uh, not taught necessarily, but we were always say, hey, you know, we have a job at hand right now. We'll deal with this later. We'll, de we'll deal with this later. And maybe some of you out watching this again live or if this is already recorded, maybe some of you can relate to that that maybe you lost a best friend or maybe you lost uh, a spouse a child or something like that and you're always told hey you know we have a job at hand right now let's knock out this job let's do this job first and then we'll we'll deal with this later and when the time comes to deal with it guess what we'll deal with it later we have another job at hand where we have another workup to do we have more training to do we have another deployment to do or you're maybe something else happens something gets in the way and unfortunately a lot of times Military personnel is not necessarily allowed, not allowed, but time-wise, it's difficult to process things that, that they might have experienced. So during uh, our time there, again, in Afghanistan, uh, there was two Marines that were very significant to me that were killed in action. Uh, one was Lance Corporal O'Connor. Another one was Lance Corporal Jackson. And during the, after we left Afghanistan, myself and one other, one other, whenever one other of my Marines, I can't talk today, uh, we were able to meet the families and we had the privilege and honor to talk about, uh, talk to one of the fam O'Connor's family about what happened. And it was very difficult, very difficult. And then all of a sudden, uh, there was a little bit of like a, a looming factor after that, after, weeks after that event, that when we met the parents because, or excuse me, the family, because things started to happen. And again, why I'm saying this is because chances are some of, maybe somebody out there watching this right now or watching this a week, two weeks from now, whatever. Maybe one of you has 
experience this as well. You think it's, you're the only person you keep to yourself, you isolate, you internalize or compartmentalize those kind of things. And I understand that. I, I definitely understand that. Uh, I, I know it's very common. I'm not the only one at the time. I did think that I was the only one, but that's not necessarily, not, not, that's not necessarily the situation. When I got in the Marine Corps, I struggled a lot. Uh, during that transitional period, I struggled with post-traumatic stress. I uh, started abusing alcohol, things of that nature. I tried suicide and whatnot. Uh, again, I'm not going into all that detail because there are videos on our uh, social media that you can see, uh, not just my story, but other veteran stories as well. And what the intent is, is to hopefully inspire veterans, just like what I'm trying to do with this leader chat today. But um, again, when I struggled with post-traumatic stress, and it just, it was very, uh, it was a very uh, culminating topic, I guess you could say. When one thing happened, it opened the door to four or five other negative things happening as well. And of course, the only way I knew how to deal with anything was hitting that bottle, right? Hitting the whiskey, hitting beer, doesn't matter, tequila, doesn't matter what it was, what your poison was. But at the same time, I knew that for, it was basically a band-aid that did not work at all. And hopefully, hopefully if some of you are, if you're experiencing this Experiencing this right now due to some type of traumatic event it doesn't have to be combat necessarily at all. It could be maybe you saw an, a, a car wreck. Maybe you saw somebody trip, fall and hit their face on a building. I don't know. But whatever tra uh, traumatized you, I understand. And hopefully this is kind of maybe the little the little uh, light in the road in your life that says, hey, let's kind of deviate from this path. And let's try a new path. Um, again, I did struggle with all that. And I know a lot of other veterans do as well. But then let's kind of let's move forward a little bit. A couple of years go by. I'm struggling, I'm struggling. All of a sudden, 2014, one of my old squad leaders, he picked me up and uh, he called me. He said, hey, uh, what's up? What's going on? And I was like, just real depressed and whatnot. And he's he's like, what's going on with you? Why are you talking all dark and what? I was like, I don't know, he's done. Uh, after several minutes of being chewed out uh, in an old uh, Marine Corps fashion, I would not expect anything less. Uh, I was invited to go to a uh, prairie dog hunt in Kansas. At that point, I did meet uh, the Marine program, uh, O'Gallon Fuse uh, get, uh, Raider Project, and I met Nick Kamalotsos there, and then he introduced me to Carl Monger, who just so happened to live 20 minutes away from me, and he still does. <laughs> and um, I laugh at that now because if you think about the irony in the situation in a whole, that it, for me, I, I don't care if you call it God, destiny, fate, whatever, the universe. Um, I just knew that that was supposed to happen. And I've been very, again, I will say it again, I can't stress it enough. I've been very fortunate and very blessed to have such a great network uh, uh, as accessible to me as possible. So I spent time with Carl. He ended up pulling me out of the house and he's like, hey, let's go rock climbing. Let's do these kind of fun things. And let's go, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do this. And he kept me busy. And, but he was showing me something big. He was showing me more essentially a giving back, uh, not necessarily taking, it's easy to take, right? Someone says, hey, I want to pay for a trip for you or whatever. Oh, great. Thanks. But then when it's time, your time to give, maybe maybe some of us try to, uh, we, we can either struggle with it or we can be the complete opposite, right? We can be giving and giving and giving and giving until we are completely exhausted of all of our resources and all of our materials, whether it's financial or taking something to the airport 20 times in a week or something like that. I understand. And again, I would like, I just want to stress that this, this video, this leader chat is hopefully is intended to inspire the veterans out there that are struggling right now, maybe just with themselves, trying to identify with themselves or they're struggling with their own identification. Um, but I understand, I, I understand because I've been there before. So again, when I, when I came out, um, Carl, he gave me, uh, excuse me, about a year went by after I met him, a year or two, we did our first retreat in Kansas. We'd put together a pheasant hunt. The pheasant hunt consisted of about of bringing about 13, 14 veterans out in Kansas. And we, at the end of the day, we had classes called uh, functional emotional fitness classes. And what these classes were, were allowed to, allowing us to alter our thought process and basically help rebuild ourselves. I didn't, I asked Carl to come out and do that because I did not want this to be a retreat when people just go out, hunt, have a good time, chug a bunch of beer and go home. Because what happens when, when, when you have that type of situation, you have the veterans like, oh, I'm struggling. I'm okay. You go to this event and also this event, they, these veterans just skyrocket. They have, they get off of this euphoric sensation when they're spending time with others and whatnot. 
But at the same time, what happens when they come home? Right. You had a great weekend, maybe a great week, depending on what you're doing, hiking, fishing, hunting, whatever. And you, you're up here. And also when you come back home and it's the exact same situation, exact same problem, and you weren't given any tools to fix or help fix your life in any aspect, you plummet. You plummet way below what really happens. Or excuse me, you plummet way below than what you were before. And now you're maybe you're hitting the bottle harder, you're isolating even deeper and further. Uh, you're not talking to anybody. The only time you go out of your house is maybe to get groceries and to uh, go to work. Maybe, if that. But I understand that. And that's something when I asked Carl to see if he would teach the functional emotional fitness classes at this retreat, he said yes. He came out. It was a great time, great trip. It was such a success. And it was it was just a, a, a blessing overall. And I can't, I can't stress that enough either because of the fact of you have all these people to come together just so happen to be Marines. I'm a little biased, right? I'm a Marine. But at the same time, to have all these Marines come together, there are some amputees that came, but they were, some of them served in combat together, Iraq or Afghanistan, but they were there to back each other up. More importantly, they were there to support each other and have a good time. But the great thing after all that was I found out that even months after that trip, that they were still keeping in touch with each other. And these guys haven't seen each other and some of them haven't seen each other in years, but they were still keeping in touch. They were still talking about the pheasant hunt. And I knew that we had some great momentum then or momentum there. Now I'm going to do a little show and tell right now. So for those watching, please, again, if you have any comments, questions, uh, if you want to input anything, please don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out and just message us or comment. And I'll get back. I'll reply to that as to my best of my ability. So again, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about show and tell real fast. Some of y'all may know what this is. A little bit of rubber, maybe some metal, wire, Velcro, and sand. Uh, that's a pressure switch. Uh, I was able to take that home from Afghanistan. And of course with that, it's just, it's just jet. It's just that, a pressure switch. So it helps control the lasers on, on uh, the PEC-16, the little box that goes on our rifles or machine guns. But it was very, very, very useful. It was able to help us fight at night, in the daytime, whatever. It was a very practical and functional tool. Now, fast forwarding a little bit, something that I have to this day, and it's actually my uh, little challenge coin hol holder. Um, this was my very first challenge coin uh, that I was given from Carl Monger. And this is it. Some of you may have it out there. Hold it up a little bit. So it's just a gallant few. I'm trying to center that. But the cool thing on the back is, and I believe this is part of the Ranger Creed, Ranger, Ranger, I can't, I know, I'm not sure which stanza. So Carl, Tony, Bryce, whoever, or any other Rangers out there, or Ranger wives, Miss Katie Hoover, uh, don't hate me for that. Uh, I am a Marine. But at the same time, um, on the back it says, never shall I fail my comrades. So let me see if I can hold that up a little bit. So again, some of y'all might, might have this, have your own challenge coin. And it means a lot to me. But the, the great thing is what these two symbols represent for me is a transition in life. And it's not necessarily a transition of like, oh, I'm getting into a new a new house, new uh, a new car, something like that. It's not that. But for me, when I look at these uh, on my, my little uh, shelves over here, this is th these were my lives. Or this is my life, basically. My Marine, my Marine Corps identity was significant and to this day it still is very significant and it means a lot to me and i have promised you that those watching veterans spouses children of veterans whatever i mean any relationship to veterans i guarantee you that somebody out there right now is feeling the same and there uh, there's a gentleman named simon sinek he, he told he told me one time that a lot of people identify their purpose in life with their job now I understand that. And some people ask, well, what's your purpose? And people are like, oh, am I, you know, for a Marine Corps rifleman, it's to locate, close with, destroy the enemy by fire and maneuver and repel the enemy by fire and close combat. So some people might identify their purpose with that. No, that's your job. What's your purpose? What are you here to do? And a couple of years later, after I took this home, I got this. Um, and now Gallant Few helped me find my purpose. Gallant Few allowed me to give back to come back to the veteran community because for years I pushed it away. I was ashamed of being a Marine. I was, uh, I was, what was it? I was embarrassed of being a rifleman, but I was ashamed of being a Marine. 
Uh, and that was because my identity was stripped from me in Afghanistan. But the great, it's, it's so, when I look at these, and again, I bring these up so adamantly because uh, chances are somebody watches right now, a week from now, two weeks from now, it doesn't matter what, they might be experiencing very similar, if not the exact same situation. They're identifying themselves with this, with their with their military history, with them what they did in the military, whether they're admin, mechanic, aviation, grunt, special operations, doesn't matter. They identify themselves with that. But then when they come home and they're done with it, well, this is all I have. This is all I have to fall back on. But then all of a sudden when you start exploring and you start like maybe letting go a little bit, you experience things like this. You experience things that are beautiful, that are solid and that they're gonna help benefit you in this life. And exactly what this organization has done for me. Recently, I talked with a, a few veterans. One of them lived over in Louisiana and it's so simple to help veterans. It's so simple. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a case by case basis, situation dictates, whatever you want to call it. But at the same time, this veteran lives over in Louisiana, wrecked a motorcycle uh, that wasn't his fault. And we talked to him and I was like, what's up? What do, you, what do you need? What can I do for you? What can I help you out with? He's like, no, you know what? My, he's like, it's, my situation sucks right now. I'm kind of stranded to my bed. The only thing I really want is just to talk some, to somebody. And I was like, well, yeah, I understand that. But like, what, what, are, what are you asking for? I mean, are you wanting to go to counseling? Are you wanting to talk to a psychiatrist, a psychologist? Do, do you have a disability rating that we can get you to the VA? He's like, no, 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 no. Do you like, I just want to talk to another veteran. And it chokes me up a little bit. If you think about it. Think about if, if you know a veteran or if you are a veteran, all of the, the people that you surrounded yourself by in your unit, that again, doesn't matter what branch of service, what era, officer enlisted, non-combatant, combatant, doesn't matter what. When you surround yourself by the with those people for as long as you did, and then to, to come home and just be like, I want to talk to just one person, not even a specific person, I just want to talk to somebody who's experienced something similar to me, or at least was in the military. Like it's, and after that, we, this, uh, this, uh, Marine and I, again, just happened to be a Marine. We ended up speaking when well, we still speak about once a month or so just to talk and get updates and whatnot. And I'm very, I'm very grateful for that. I'm very blessed. And I'm, I'm glad that I'm, as the unfortunate situation happened for him, I'm glad that it brought, brought him to us because who knows where, where he would be if he didn't have an organization to reach out to like gallant few or any other veteran uh, service organization. It's very simple, but let's move on a little bit. Just like, we're gonna talk for a few more minutes because again, uh, I'm about myself and I imagine people can get a little tired of me rambling a little bit, but let's talk about outcomes for me. Outcomes for me, maybe you can use, uh, you can use this over, um, you can use this for yourself, but there's some major, there's let's say, there's three or four major outcomes out of this because it's an organization I was able to obtain full custody of my daughter. Again, the uh, next biggest thing that I was able to establish in my life, or I guess to reestablish in my life was finding my purpose. My purpose wasn't to be a Marine. My purpose wasn't to be a dad, or it's not to be a dad. That's part of my, that's, that's maybe like a, a description in my, in, my, uh, in my purpose. But my purpose is to serve. I serve the country, serve the Marine Corps. I, I continue to serve my fellow veterans to the left and right of me. And I'm very, very, very at peace with that. And I hope that somebody out there struggling right now or who, who feels like that dark storm is coming swiftly and rapidly towards them. And that's gonna be full of isolation, depression, alcoholism, things of that nature, substance abuse. I hope that this is, you know, this is your wake up call. Let's be, you know, hopefully Gallant Fuel, one of our organizations can be the lighthouse for you. If you're lost at sea, metaphorically speaking, let us be the lighthouse. Come to us. We'll see what we can do to help you out. Um, you got to put the work in, right? <laughs> when you're in the military, you didn't get that free promotion. You had to put the work in. You had to earn it. Same thing with, uh, with us, but we're going to be there. To, as, long, as much work you give to us, we're going to help you out to the best of our ability. Um, two, uh, two other little outcomes for me. That because that happened to me because of this organization, because people who cared about me was I was the biggest thing was I was able to open my eyes to a better life. I was able to put the bottle down, I was able to put uh, the drugs down, and I was able to pick up, get sober, and start working out, have a good life. 
And then I'm like, oh man, look at the good things coming my way. Look at the look at the, all the things that I have right now. Those are a little bit of a reality check, similar to when uh, rounds are going overhead, and you're experiencing combat, and or you're experiencing you just had a bad car wreck or something like that happens. Like you you understand that one maybe that one brief point in time. Like, oh man, I'm so grateful that I have a roof over my head, or I have a car, I have a job, I have my children, whatever, whatever the hell it is. You get that little moment of of being grateful, and so. I was very fortunate again to to be grateful to, for the and to the witness the things that are going on in my life right now actively, and I hope that you can do that yourself. During our FEF training, which is a functional emotional fitness uh, training, there's um, four topics we we go over. Uh, it's uh, love, health, wealth, and self image. And the self image is it's not so much like well how do you look. It's it's more for me I, I again that's that's easy to see one uh, one point of view from it, one aspect of it. But I, I try to look a little bit more, like, let's look for the hidden meaning kind of thing. And when I say that, I mean, self image, what kind of person am I like, am I am I happy internally? Am I happy? Uh, am I dissatisfied with something? What's going on? Let's fix this. And let's fix this. That way, we can, we can uh, basically portray a great life, not just portray it, but live a great life. That's again, you know, opening my eyes to a better, a better life happened because of this organization. And also the last little thing that I was very, <laughs> I'm taking a risk out and I'm still working on it, but uh, some of you may know this, uh, who know of me personally, I'm, I'm writing a book because again, the, the book is intended for, uh, to inspire veterans. And because I know a lot of veterans, they, they go to the military sometimes they experience the neg negative uh, experiences or traumatic experiences they go and they leave and then they don't, they, they don't know exactly how to maneuver past this or past that point. Hopefully this book is just another medium. Again, I'm, I, I try to do as much as I can to help inspire veterans to, to become better, to become healthier. And I hope that this book is just another medium to do that, to accomplish that. But I know um, I do want to say three little tips. Maybe some of you might have already heard these, uh, heard of them or done them. And if you, maybe if you're getting bad results, maybe you got to tweak it a little bit. Maybe, you know, you tried it one way, but it didn't work that way. But, so let's try it again differently. Three little things. If you're depressed right now, if you're isolated, laying on your couch, laying on your bed, don't want to get up, don't want to go to work, don't want to take care of your kids, don't want to listen to your spouse, or if, if you're by yourself and you don't want to take care of your pet or something. I've been there. And that's perfectly, especially after a traumatic experience, it's very, very, it's not almost like understandable, but it's, it's like almost expected. And I've been there for, I've talked to several veterans. <laughs> I can't tell, explain how many, and not only myself, but the Marine, my Marines, my brothers that I was in Afghanistan, but a lot of them experienced very similar situations, but three things that can help you out with this. And I wish, oh man, I wish I would have known this about 10 years ago, but of course, you know, things happen for a reason. And I was by, because of Gallup, I was able to, I was really able to understand these things. One of the biggest ones is that can, that can, I really, really emphasize is get your ass up, go spend time in nature. If you're not sure how to spend time in nature, that's fine, but it's not an excuse. If you're watching this video right now, again, either live or if it's already recorded, it's not hard to follow this page or any, any other veteran service organization page. Get up, go outside and walk around. If you're able to go outside and rock climb. If you don't know how to rock climb, guess what? Backwards planning. I want to rock climb. Well, what do I need to do to rock climb? Uh, I need to find a place to go. I need to get some gear. I need to find maybe a group to go with. Not hard. Along with that, along with getting out, getting out in nature, I can't emphasize this enough. And it doesn't have to be very rigorous. It doesn't have to be the most intense thing ever. But get up and get some exercise. Spending time in nature, it's it's and, and working out or uh, getting some PT in. I think they're pretty similar. They they correlate with each other pretty well. But I think they can be separate. You can go get some exercise in a gym, a climbing gym, a weightlifting gym, or go walk on the treadmill. Spending time in nature could just be going out with your family or yourself or some friends, or whatever, and getting a picnic and go outside to a park. Especially right now, it's October. Depending where you are in the country, it's it can be a pretty gorgeous outside. And it's fall, so you have all the you have all the colors and leaves and whatnot. So you can take pictures, get your pumpkin spice pumpkin spice latte, whatever, and enjoy it. 
the thing is, get out in nature. It you're going to release all these. Uh, oh, I don't know. I'm not even going to say the chemicals in my head because I know I'm going to say one wrong, and then somebody's going to bash on me, especially one of the the, the Gallantry team members because they're watching me. But at the same time, getting out in nature is huge. Getting some exercise is even bigger. But combining them, man, it's it's a no brainer. But the last thing that is kind of really heavy with me that I I, I love this. I probably love this more than. Um, been actually working out or spending time in nature. My third, the third little suggestion of mine is do something for somebody else. From day one in boot camp or OCS, whatever, doesn't matter. From day one of your military experience and your military career, you're told to do things with uh, with a team or as a team with using teamwork. Right? If you're assaulting, if you're assaulting through the enemy, you're not by yourself being a little Mr. Rambo. You're not by yourself. So don't tackle life by yourself. And if you're doing well enough right now, I guarantee you that you can get up, get in your car, do not even get in your car, go to the gas station, walk to the gas station. Why walk to the gas station? Guess what? Spend time in nature, get a little bit of exercise, pick up a gallon of water, a bag of chips, whatever, take it to somebody who might need it. Maybe if you live in an apartment complex, take it to your neighbor, whatever. Because I guarantee you when you, when you're doing that one thing nice for somebody else, it's gonna it's gonna grow. It's gonna reproduce itself in the butterfly effect. Maybe not or not, not so much a butterfly effect. Excuse me, but you're gonna it's gonna essentially ripple into somebody to somebody. It's, gonna, it's contagious. Jessica, or we call her JB, she recommended a book, Nature Fix Happy Nature Fix Happier, Healthier, Creative. She put a link out there, uh, and she highly recommends that book. And uh, she definitely rec- she definitely is knowledgeable and savvy when it comes to that thing, that type of thing. Excuse me. But when you're doing those things, those three things, if you're not going to do anything else with your life, do those three things. Because I promise you, it's gonna it's gonna give you that inspiration, that motivation. It's gonna help you just become not even a better person. Again, I get a little choked up when I think about it. <clears throat> um, but on this coin, again, I'll, I'll pull it up one more time. Never shall I fail my comrades. A comrade in my eyes doesn't have to necessarily be somebody you, you were in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Vietnam, Korea, whatever. A comrade doesn't have to be that person. The way I look at it is I, I, I swap it out with Americans, patriots, whatever you want to call them, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to fix for, for whatever works for you. How about that? And I, I understand you can't be there to save everybody else. You got to fix yourself first. And I, I get that. But the fact of never shall I fail my comrades, that's huge. That means a lot to me. Maybe it'll mean a lot to you. Um, Again, I, I spoke, wow, I spoke for 30 minutes right now. Time goes by fast when you're having fun. Get outside, get some exercise in. Doesn't matter if you're lift, lifting weights, rock climbing, <laughs> or if you're just walking around, get some exercise, get outside, do something for somebody else because I guarantee you it's gonna be one of the best things that you do for yourself. I really appreciate those that are watching right now or those that took the time to watch this as a, a recorded video. I've been, again, uh, I've been very fortunate, been very blessed. I've been there, done that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not done. I'm not done serving. I'm not, my purpose, I I think I honestly, I just found out my purpose. Now I'm doing my best to act on it. So for those watching, do not hesitate to reach out to somebody on the Gallantry team, <clears throat> on the Gallantry social media, or to your fellow veterans. And there's one more thing I want I want to bring up right before I get off, and then and then um, I'm I'm not going to uh, take up it. Oh, sorry, I won't take up any more of your time. But there's one thing that was established by a gentleman named Boone Cutler. Boone Cutler. Uh, sorry, my dog is going crazy over there. Boone Cutler is uh, an army veteran who was in psyops, a psyops unit. And he is, he was the, he is the author of something called the Spartan pledge. 
Spartan Pledge goes as this. I will not take my life by my own hand until I talk to my battle buddy first. My mission is to find a mission to help my warfighter family. Right there, what that means is for those struggling, for those out there who are who may be a little bit lost in the sauce and they're hurting, they are trying to process things that happened in the military uh, or some type of uh, traumatic event. I understand that. And I understand that when you think about the negativity of life and how it's easy to like, oh, this sucks. I hate this. This is BS. Life's out to get me, blah, 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 blah. I understand. But eventually put the pity party away. Pick up that pack and you keep going, right? Just because you're on a mile 10 of a 20 mile hike doesn't mean you just stop because you're tired. You pick it, you, you ruck up and you keep going. So what that pledge is, it's very, very, very serious in the Gallant View community. We, that's probably one of the most sacred things that we have. And at the same time, I, I'm very fortunate, very blessed to have taken that pledge, not even like years ago, but even more recently with um, a really close uh, friend of mine who's basically, he is my brother, and we rock times with us. And for those who would like to take that pledge with us, reach out to us. Not only that, if you're out there right now and you're either, maybe somebody, maybe you are struggling a little bit, that's fine. Or maybe you're not struggling, but reach out to us and you can take that Spartan pledge with one of your one of your soldiers or one of your airmen, Marines, sailors, doesn't matter what. You can take it with another, just any other person. You can take that pledge because when those dark days hit, you got to hold that coin up. And all you have to do is say, hey, I'm having a dark time right now. You talk to that person you, talk, you took the pledge with, you recite it together. When you recite it together, it's like, hey, there's a little bit of a gut check. Kind of sucks, a little abrasive, a little rough, but you know that. Somebody's there to take care of uh, somebody is there to take care of you and cares for you. But you have a mission. You, you have two missions within the Spartan Pledge. To help the warfighter family and to call my your battle buddy. So I'm not gonna I don't want to dwell too much into that because I, I do want to end on a happy note. I do want to end on um, something positive, something inspirational. And I'm not sure what it's gonna be. So if anybody, any of you watching this right now, if you have anything you would like to say, please send it in right now. I'm looking at us uh, on the comments. We've got a few comments coming in and I'm, I'm very grateful and appreciative of all you watching this. Don't hesitate to reach out to us, please. If you are a veteran or you know a veteran, anything like that, we're here to help. This organization definitely, if it did not change my life, then it definitely saved my life. I don't know where I'd be. Probably still drunk. <laughs> Um, but okay. And if you're in the Dallas Fort Worth area of Texas, again, reach out to us. We go rock climbing three times a week in Grapevine. Uh, and it's a great way to exercise. We have veterans coming in all the time. We're always looking to build our community. And I know we have it over in uh, North Carolina and Georgia as well. So reach out to our pages and we'll shoot you the information if you're in that, those areas. Um, again, I, I'm very grateful. Um, to, I'm very grateful to have this, uh, to portray this message out to the public. Tony Main, he is the, uh, he's leading our, the charge on Patriot Challenge, along with uh, Darby Project, Army, the Gallant Views Army Ranger Program. He says, tell everybody about your job, tell everyone about your job specific to Gallant View. So what I do, for those of Gallant View, I'll just put this in there real quick. Uh, myself, along with Bryce Mahoney, um, I am one of the veteran support specialists so when a veteran signs up on the website uh, and they complete the, our asthma check, our survey, myself and Bryce are one of the first people that reaches out to the veteran and says, hey, what's going on? Thanks for signing up. Let's talk. And at that point, we see what we can do to help out the veteran. Um, and a lot of times, which is, you know, ex I love doing that because <laughs> that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. But at the same time, there's veterans out there like, I'm doing really well. I, I don't I don't need help. And they're like, I'm like, okay, so what's up? Like, I just want to get back. Got it. Solid. I'm tracking on all that. So at that point, we're able to connect that one veteran who who wants to help. We put him in, with him or her into a little uh, area, where, uh, and then we bring up these veterans in that same area who want some assistance, want some help, or want to just spend time with another veteran. And we're able to connect those veterans with that initial veteran. I've been very, very, very fortunate. I was about to say lucky. Carl would have got me for that. But I've been very fortunate. To, to be able to have a part in this fantastic organization, this fantastic veteran community, and this beautiful, beautiful veteran community. 
And I, I could not be more thankful for any of this. And so if you, if you, uh, if you haven't signed up, you have a mission today, gallantview.org, complete the survey. Or if you want to just skip the web, go into that website, go to asthmacheck.org and we're here. Survey is 26 questions long. If you take your time, if you take your time on um, doing it, it'll be about a two and a half minute uh, survey about yourself. And the cool thing is when you think, when I, when you think of a survey, if you call a, com a phone company and they're like, Hey, take a survey about how we did, we're going to flip the tables and put it on you. Okay. Let's take a, take a survey to see how you're doing professionally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and socially. We'll cover those five areas and see how well you're doing those. And if you think you can, you need improvement. Great. Let's help you out. We're here to help you out. Carl Monger. Well, he's watching this. You gotta be careful. What happens when you don't have a plan? So many things can happen. So many things, not always good. A lot of things can be very, very bad. But at the same time, if you don't have a plan, you're not going anywhere. You're just stagnant. And if I'm wrong, I'm waiting for Carl's reply. And if you're on uh, social media, you might be able to watch his response. But okay, everybody, I've been job owner now for 36 minutes. I'm very grateful for all of you who have watched this right now, who have commented, who have shared this, who have done anything, or if you're watching this as a recorded, please, please not hesitate to reach out to our organization if, if you need to. Not only if you need to, just reach out anyways. Sign up, asthmacheck.org. It's not hard. A-Z-I-M-U-T-H, check, C-H-E-C-K.org. It's not hard. Take the survey because we're here to help. We want to help you out because chances are we can allow you to grow, to become the best, uh, to become the best version of yourself. And Carl did catch my response. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're getting a few, uh, few comments here. So Carl wanted me to say that uh, when you don't have a plan, the future happens by accident. And in my eyes, when it happens by accident, that means you're not in control of it. Ms. Katie Hoover mentioned right now, uh, she mentioned right now, fail to plan is a plan to fail. And Carl, again, he mentioned, uh, <laughs> Carl mentioned right now, he goes, the only person that gets ahead by accident is Forrest Gump. The survey tells us where you are now. Then we need to know where you're going. Then we can ch uh, chart the course uh, to get there. Or what we call in the Gallantview community, Gallantview staff, uh, the team is basically plotting your ass as the check funny how that worked out right as the check survey we will help you plot your asthma to get to where you want to go in life whether you want to be a bodybuilder or you want to be uh working in data migration or anything in between we're here to help but not only are we here to help but i guarantee you your fellow veterans that you may know of or may not know of are here to help you as well okay Everybody, thank you again for watching. My name is Zach Sabalos. I am a U.S. Marine. I am one of the veteran support specialists of the fantastic organization, Gallant Few. We're here to help. Please don't hesitate. If you want to help somebody else out, but you don't know how, reach out to us. We're here for you. There's going to be one little last little keynote that I'm going to end on, and it's be brave, be bold, be gallant. Have a great day.